Hello and welcome back to this another Andrew Shane 25 video. Today you join us at an early, early morning Rome Street station, travelling on the XPT from Brisbane to Melbourne. But in this video we'll only be covering from Brisbane to Sydney. The XPT, entering service in 1982 on the Sydney to Dubbo runs, has been the backbone of New South or long distance New South Wales train link services. Running from Sydney to places like Brisbane, Melbourne and Dubbo with services along those lines and on the North Coast Line to Casino and Grafton. Built by Comedge and ABB Transportation, these have been the backbone of New South Wales train link services since the 1980s. Today we're travelling in first class, like it's first class. Anyways, let's jump aboard and we're heading off from Roma Street. Prior to the XPT running up to Brisbane, the service used to be known as the Brisbane Limited, and prior to the Brisbane Transit Centre, which has since been demolished, Opening in 1986, the train, all services from New South Wales and down south, terminated at South Brisbane. That's where the Sandy Gauge line used to run. However, since since 1986, all services have been extended over the Maryvale Bridge on dual gauge track into Roma Street. And that's where they run ever since. As we're heading on to the main south line and the junction where all freight trains head towards Acacia Ridge, where the freight terminal is. So the service pattern along the north coast line is very complicated. 
So between Grafton and Sydney there are three trains a day, whilst whilst there's only once daily to Brisbane. The other the other lot goes as far as Casino, that's where the original Mulilaba service went from. However, since the closure of the loan in 2004, they've only run as far as Casino, but with the odd coach connection through to Brisbane. Anyway, since we're now coming out of, well, one familiar territory and heading into a slightly familiar territory, let's have a look around the seat. First class seats are just basically the same as economy seats, so I'm not going to point things out. Here we have the tray table, which is nice and sturdy. Seat pocket with, with safety card, QR code for feedback, and rubbish and a bin bag, which is nice. There's an armrest, which can be movable. Curtains, which you'll see draw out a bit later. And lastly, reading lights, with a slightly old fashioned, but oh well. And the seat recline in first class is ridiculous, 45 degree angle, and it's quite comfortable, especially for those overnight journeys where you couldn't get a sleeper. But at least it's nice and comfortable. Apart from that, there are luggage racks above your seat. And that's about it, basically. And the AT125 this test. Well, and the seat is good, although I did get an unbuttocks during a slight bit of the journey. Curtains can, as you can see here, can be drawn. Although, if you put where I'm sitting, it can be a bit be a difficult angle. But oh well, at least they work and it blocks out the sun quite nicely. And once again for the safety card, safe a safety card which is oh god no, it's full of somebody's drinks. Feedback form and a bin bag and somebody's cheese and cracker packets. Anyways, as we're heading down the main range between between Bodes and Brisbane, we come across the border loop. Heritage listed in New South Wales is a spurious series of spirals and tunnels located along the way. And if you look below, as you can see back there, you can see the tracks below. Anyways, I'm hungry and I'm hot to get some breakfast. Hey, what are those green dogs doing there? Anyways, the buffet car is full of stock, full of food. Ultimately, I wanted a cheese toasty, but I couldn't, so I got a sausage roll for breakfast. Not the healthiest of breakfast, but oh well. The sausage roll was nice and fluffy, although I'm gonna admit, what can you possibly go wrong with a microwavable sausage roll? Although I did have the cheese and tea, cheese and ham and cheese toasty on the train down to Melbourne, and I can say it was nice, fluffy, and warm inside. Probably one of the best cheese toasties ever. And for the sausage roll, at sort of six dollars nine dollars it's worth the price oh yeah heads up food is not complimentary in first class so it's tough luck princesses anyways we're approaching our first stop Kuguli. just like Queensland rail travel the train will only stop at certain stations if there are reservation reservations except for major distance ones once again well as always I'll stop here at Kukuli was brief and we were on our way soon enough. We're now approaching our first major stop of Casino. The station itself was opened on the 22nd of September 1930. Prior to 2004, this was a junction station, with services heading up on the original line to Mooloolaba. 
The Boulevard Line closed down in 2004. However, it was the first bit of the North Coast Line, which was opened in eight, which was opened between Boulevard, Byron Bay, and Lismore in 1894, and it was extended down to Casino in 1903. The branch, the line which we travelled on from Brisbane, was originally a branch line to Kogooli in 1910. However, it was later extended through to South Brisbane in 1930. As I say, the current station itself was opened in, on in 1930. Now, with a population of almost 10,000, you'll think, hmm, why does it need to be a major stop? Well, here's the thing. Apart from loading passengers and bags, there were coach connect. New South Wales Train Link also does coach connections, which includes connections to the Gold Coast. Anyways, after a short brief stop, we were on our way. And our next major stop of Grafton is an interesting one. We're now approaching Grafton. The town itself with a population of around six with a population of around nineteen twenty thousand almost twenty thousand. It's the second major calling point of the station. Now the station we're gonna be pulling into Grafton is quite complicated. Now originally there were two stations in Grafton. The one we're gonna be stopping at was the original South Grafton station. The original Grafton station opened on the 6th of November 1905 and it lasted and it was closed on the 1st of October 1976 being replaced by the Grafton by the now modern day Grafton South Grafton. However, it wasn't always called Graft the station where it replaced. It wasn't always called Grafton. As I again said, it was originally called South Grafton and then Grafton Central but eventually it was adopted, but it was shortened to look to Grafton by 2005. The bridge we're currently crossing is the, cross, is the Grafton Bridge, which crosses over the Clarence River, opened in 1932, was the first major river crossing. Prior to that, prior to its opening, you'll have to catch a train ferry. So carriages will be loaded onto the ferry, hauled across the river, and then another loco will take it through. However, however, by the bridge's opening in 1932, it really wasn't necessary. And complete and mark the completion of the Brisbane to Sydney corridor, which today carries many freight passenger and freight services all over it. And as we pull into Grafton, we will have a short. We will be stopping short at the station because we need because the locos have been probably been have been refueled since it left Sydney the day before. So after a short time being refueled, we move slightly moved into the platform a bit. And once again, our stop was kind of brief, but we did have a crew change. That's because the crew, which joined us the night before, had probably had their sign-on times yeah. around 10 or 11. And manned the train all night into Brisbane. Anyways, we're now moving into the platform slightly after our refueling. And, and as you can see, our, the staff on the platform are already waiting for us ready to take over the staff who have been working the train since all night since they since they got the train into Brisbane turned it around and headed back out again
And just like at Sino, Grafton has also have coach connections to other destinations, including far flung ones. Anyways, short stop with brief, and on our way to our next major calling point, Okoth Harbour, and the largest and also the largest population centre of all the journey. Our next major calling point, and probably one of the largest centres we'll pass through along the journey to Sydney, is Coffs Harbour. With a population of around 78,000, it's probably one of the largest settlements we'll pass along the way. And in fact, you're kind of lucky to have stopping a tr free train today to Sydney at Coffs Harbour. Once again, I'll stop with Shorts and Brief and we're on our way. The station we're currently serving opened on the 30th of August 1915. And originally, the line to Brisbane was originally, was originally, if you wanted to, back in 1909, if you wanted to get a train to Brisbane, you would have to get, have to travel on the main north line to Wollongarra, swap trains to the border, because the gauge difference, because Queensland uses a narrow gauge, while New South Wales uses a standard, swap trains there, and take the train into Brisbane via Toowoomba, and Rosewood and Ipswich. However, by the time the line was extended through to South Brisbane in 1930, it was kind of eliminated. Anyway, it's lunchtime! And once again, meals are not complimentary in first class, so today I got the sweet and sour pork, which cost me uh, sort of around $9. And how can I say this? This has to be one of the worst meals I've had on the train. The pork was dry and God knows awful, the rice was dry as the Sahara Desert, and the vegetables, don't get me started. So it's not worth nine dollars. Anyways, we're now at Kendall. We had a short break here because we were running early, running ahead of time. So we fall. So staff allows us to go on the platform and sort of stretch our legs, which for some of us travelling from Brisbane was really, really nice. Apart from moving oh, to and from the buffet car. Anyways, back to the meal. This has to be one of the worst meals I've ever had on a train, ever in my life. And it's not worth nine dollars. Although the roll did make something make it up, still one of the worst. And the meal choices on the train were a mang chicken mango curry, a macaroni cheese with peri peri chicken sauce. I had that for dinner on the train to Melbourne. It was lovely. And and the roast turkey, and also the vegetarian lasagna. Anyways, we're now at Tari. The Tari station itself opened on the 5th of February 1913 and with the town itself with a population of around 26,000 is probably the second largest settlement we'll probably go through today, but from Maitland. Anyways, as you can see in the background before we departed, the station is going through an accessibility upgrade, which will hopefully mean that all users of mobility otherwise or not, can use the station, which I'm very happy and pleased to see. Which is very nice indeed. So, there are three, two types of first class seats on the XPT. So firstly, you have the main first class seats, which you can travel, which, I, which is highly suitable for day trains. And also, but there are also day sitters, which are the sleepers, which you can use. 
but you're going to be sharing it with strangers along the way. But it's good for families. Anyways, we're at our first stop in the Hunter Valley of Dungog. Although no passengers were getting on or off the train, we sort of stopped here for some reason. Probably either to let a freight train up the head through, or we were waiting for something. But anyways, after a short while, we were off, heading down along the, along the main line to, for our, to our next stop of Maitland. And, and we'll be hopefully entering the coal rich Hunter Valley. a very long coal train means we are in the heart of the Hunter Valley and we're approaching our one of our first made one of our first major stops well one or two stops in the Hunter Maitland as we pass the XPT heading up to Brisbane our stop here at Maitland was short and brief once again The station itself opened in 1880. Was the main was the was the handled trains heading on in all directions and interstate ones. And surprisingly, the Hunter Valley has its own rail network, with with regular services heading towards Newcastle. And most services traveling any at Maitland or or Talara. Anyways, after a short brief stop at Maitland, 
we are heading towards our next stop and into the rich coal valley of the hunter We're now approaching our, la our second stop in the Hunter and the last stop you can get on the train closer into Sydney is Broadmeadows which serves as the major station for Newcastle as Newcastle Interchange is not accessible by the XPT. Stops, the stop was short and brief and we were on our way again. The station itself opens on the 15th of August 1887 it serves the mega rain regular main line serving between Sydney and Newcastle. And it's also one of the major freight corridors heading up between Sydney and Brisbane and major regional centres in New South Wales. After once once again we we are heading into this is beyond Newcastle, this is the train will be able to pick up some speed. And some sections between between Newcastle, between Broadmeadows and Wyong means you can get the train up to 160. Anyways, enjoy. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, on this service you have the option to sit in the sleeping compartment. So as you can see here, the bunk bed folds out and that's about it in terms of the sleeping compartments, including this long corridor. Bathroom time! So the bathroom was kept nice and clean throughout the journey, although I probably only used it once anyways because I'm not bothered busting anyways. Anyways, it is dinner time, and tonight I selected the roast turkey, which cost the same as the Sweden South Pork, but this time the dinner was able to redeem themselves, with the roast turkey being nice and moist, potatoes nice and fluffy, and of course, the vegetables were nice. And although I did get an ice cream this time around, and come on, that thing was frozen solid. Although I didn't have it for dessert for lunch the next day on the trip to Marlon and Lisa was bright. Thank you. 
as you may have saw already, we've already hit the Hawkesbury River bit of the line, which is spectacular. And the bridge we're crossing right now is the mighty Hawkesbury River Railway Bridge. The bridge we're actually crossing is the second version of it, opened back in 1932, replacing the current, replacing the original bridge, which dates back to 19, when the line opens in 1880. However, the reason why they had to replace it was in a single track, you can duplicate it, and basically the bridge was kind of falling apart. So, so yeah, and the remnants of the original bridge can clearly be seen by that stuff you just probably missed. As we are climbing up Coan Bank and passing our first, passing the major Sydney terminus of Barawa. This means we've hit the Sydney Suburban Rail Network, full of, well, God knows, double-deckers, and, quite frankly, trains much shorter than Queensland, by carriage lengths. Anyways, we're now approaching the first major Sydney stop, well, one of two, actually, of the Hornsby. <laughs> and surprisingly, here's a fair trick, which I didn't use because I was getting to Melbourne. Here's the trick with the fares. You can book to a suburban station in Sydney, not one of the stations that the XBT will stop at, and you'll get a, access to safer fare, which is nice. Anyways, again, stop at Hornsby Shore Creek, and we're on our way pretty quick. By the looks of this visa coming, probably coming in for the Blue Mountains, we're approaching our second major stop in Sydney, and the last before our terminus, Strathfield, a major Sydney station with all line with the lines from the north by coming in via Epping, converging the main south ones from the Blue Mountains at Broken Hill and southeast towards Adelaide. Once again, our stop was short and brief, and we were on our way again, heading towards our final stop of Sydney Central Station. And I'll sum it up for review in once we once on the final bit, heading into Central. Anyways, enjoy the last bits of the journey.
As you may have noticed, we're on our approach to Sydney Central Station. So let's summarise the trip right now. That's starting off with the seat. Although it was an okay seat, I think it's worth your money going economy class. Although economy, although in first class you get a bit more recline, which if you're on the night train could help a bit if you can't get a sleeper, and and also more legroom. The food. Although I did try the macaroni and cheese on the train to Melbourne with that with an addition of a spicy peri peri chicken, it was rather okay, apart from the sweet and sour pork, which still to this day, which is probably one of the worst meals I've ever had on a train. The staff were lovely and friendly, and I will give credit to the staff to, to the staff on that on my train to Melbourne from Sydney because we were running over an hour late due to a signal failure in Mossvale, the staff kept us updated along the way and see how much of a delay we were making up. However, in the end, we did go over an hour late into Melbourne. And honestly, I I'm give, and I was give credit to the staff. They did a magnificent job of keeping us up to date with the updates. Anyways, so I paid $262 for this trip. Yes, yeah, two hundred sixty-two dollars. And do I think it's worth your price? Kind of, although it's more worth your price going in economy, since you get very limited things in first class, so like no complimentary food and no complimentary non-alcoholic drinks. Like, come on, guys, it's not the spirit of Queensland or the Overland. Anyways, where that bing bag hits a bit of history. Where that bing bag is, it's the space where there used to be a telephone box used to be. However, it's since been disbanded a long time ago. Anyways, time to wrap up the video. Thank you for watching this video. Please remember to subscribe and share this video. And also, don't forget to ring that notification bell and comment also. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. 
and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.